guys, welcome back. So today I found out that the New York City Public Library publishes the top 10 books that they rent out every single year they publish this. And I figured it would be interesting to react to it, see if any of these books are surprising and see how many that I have read and you can see how many you have read. So if you wanna see the list, then just keep watching. Now, the number 10 book on the list, I have actually not read this book. It is An American Marriage by Tayari Jones. However, this is a book that I definitely want to read. I Upcoming, I want to read all of Bill Gates's recommended books. And this was actually a book that he recommended on his like top books for winter or something. So I definitely want to read this book. I'm kind of surprised that this one made it into the top 10 because... I didn't realize it was that popular, but I guess it is. It is number 10 on the list. Now coming in at number nine is Nine Perfect Strangers. That's actually really funny that it's nine and nine. I honestly haven't really even heard of. Like, it looks really familiar, but I honestly have no idea what this book is even about. Okay, I need to look into this book more because I'm intrigued, but I don't know what this is. Now this one doesn't even have that good of reviews. Like the reviews are kind of bad. Um, okay, this is the summary of this book. Okay, Leanne Mori Moritari is back with another delicious page turner, but this time her characters don't discover their lives unexpectedly transformed by a surprising event. They deliberately buy into a 10 day spa package with the hope that they will emerge different happy people. A few days of silence, lots of yoga and mindfulness, and absolutely no alcohol seems to be working wonders. At least for middle-aged novelist Frances Welty, who's recovering from an online swindle and a career crash. Ugh. Okay, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I, so I guess it's like nine people who go to a spa together. Like that is what this book is about, but um, interesting. Number nine, that is number nine. So number eight on the list is Where the Crawdads Sing. This book I have heard really good things about. I know it has been super popular. I've seen it all over the place. Personally, I, I don't really know what this book is about. I have not read it, but it is on my TBR list and I hope to get to it sometime this year. I feel like I have to. Eight is my lucky number and it seems like a good book. So that's number eight. Okay, number seven. Number seven on the list is Milkman. This one is another book. I'm surprised. I'm kind of ashamed to say that I've not heard of this book either. Okay, so the quick synopsis I could find on this book, uh, basically this is a coming of age fiction slash psychological fiction. So just make what you want of that. Yeah, number seven. Okay, number six. This one is Bad Blood, Secrets and Lies in a Silicon Valley Startup. This book I'm actually super interested in. I've watched the documentary of this story. Basically, this is a true story of a woman named Elizabeth Holmes, I believe. And basically she founded this company that had this device where it was supposed to be able to take just like a single drop of blood and diagnose like, a bazillion diseases and um but it turned out to be like a total scam so i watched the documentary it was super interesting and so i am interested in reading this book so yeah i'm not i'm not too surprised that that ended up on the list and that is number six number five on the list is another book that i am i am ashamed to say that i have never heard of i feel like if these are really the top 10 books like i should know about them but i don't so yeah um, number five is Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. And the synopsis I could find, it says it's a family saga about four generations of a Korean family that is set in Korea and Japan. Um, and it was a National Book Award finalist. Um, sounds kind of interesting. I guess, honestly, like, I feel like that's a book that I would probably never actually get to. But... I don't know, maybe. If any of you guys have read it, let me know in the comments. Is it worth reading or not? Let me know. Okay, number four is a book that I am not surprised to see on this list at all. This is Circe by Madeline Miller. Um, personally, I have not read this book. 
because it's like one of those books that if it didn't have all of these awards, I would have like zero interest in it. But by the fact that it's like, it's on this list, it's on like so many top book lists. I think it was the book of the year in 2019 from book of the month. So it, it has all these awards. Basically, I think it's some sort of like ancient Greek Book. I don't know. It's let me look up a synopsis of it. A bold and subversive retelling of the goddess's story. So Circe, the goddess, it is a retelling of her story. And it was a New York Times bestselling book. So yeah, as I said, won a bunch of awards. Personally, like the idea of that, it doesn't sound that interesting to me. But I feel like something's got to be likable about it if it's winning all this stuff. So I don't know, maybe, maybe I'll check it out. If, if you've read it, let me know. Um, now, number three is a book that I'm kind of surprised about. It's actually a book that I've read. It is Little Fires Everywhere. And I thought this book was, it was okay. It was not that memorable. I think I gave it three or four stars. It's basically a story about, it's like a mother daughter story. Um, I don't really even remember the details about it, but I read it for a book club and I'm kind of surprised that this book made it so high into the list, but I guess it was like everybody's book club was reading this, I guess, in New York. So yeah, number three. Okay, and then next, the two top books, I am not really surprised at all that these made it to the top two. And number two on the list is Educated, a memoir by Tara Westover. And the reason that I'm not surprised by this book is I feel like anytime you go into any bookstore, any like airport bookstore, anything, this book is like everywhere. I think I actually bought it in an airport. So I have in fact read this book, but I'm gonna be honest, I only read half of it. Not that it was bad, but I feel like it was a book that I, I purchased to read on a plane or on a trip and like once that trip was over, I just never got to it again. So yeah, maybe I should read the end of that book. But yeah, I'm not surprised at all by that book. Now, number one, and that is not surprising at all. It's Becoming by Michelle Obama. And I feel like this is the easiest slot into number one because Michelle Obama obviously is very well known and I think is is pretty well liked by most people. So I was really not surprised to see this book at all. I'm sure this was like top of New York Times bestselling list. Like it's gotta be like, this book is everywhere. I feel like it's gotten so much hype. And I actually just finished this book today and I really loved the book. I gave it five stars. It was like everything that you expect it's going to be. I feel like it fulfilled those expectations for me. It was fun and lighthearted, but it was still like more serious and emotional and it kind of pulled at the heartstrings and it also gave an inside look into life in the White House. So I would really recommend Becoming. Obviously it's very popular in New York City. It's gotta have something going for it, right? So, yeah, those were the top 10 books. Let me know which of these books you have read. How many of the top 10 books have you read from the New York City library checkouts? Personally, I have read two and a half and I'm kind of ashamed to say that it's the top three. I've read two and a half of the top three. So maybe I am just like too drawn to the most hyped books of the year, I guess. Yeah, but let me know what is your number of those top 10 down in the comments. I wanna know. And if you re wanna recommend any of the ones that I've not yet read, let me know that too. And if you want to see more videos about books and reading, then subscribe to my channel because I post two to three times a week about books and reading. So I would love to have you join me here. And that's it, bye guys.